Howdy, thanks for joining us. Today we have uh, Joshua 24, beginning at verse 14. In the, uh, earlier in the chapter, Joshua, who's old and dying, has been walking the Israelites through uh, their history with God. He starts with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he says, Look how the Lord your God, Yahweh, excuse me, how Yahweh took care of your people through all these years, brought you into the land of Egypt to protect you from the famine. When you were enslaved in Egypt, he brought you out of Egypt, and he now brought you into the promised land and given you an inheritance. And now uh, we pick up in verse 14 where Joshua basically says, um, Serve the God who's taking care of you, and forget the false gods who haven't done anything for you. So verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And if it's evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it's the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the ways that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You're not able to serve the Lord, for he's a holy God. He's a jealous God. He'll not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You're witnesses against yourselves that you've chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We're witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, to the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and put in place statutes and rules for them at Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there under the terebinth that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it's heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. Now something to think about here uh, that kind of covers the whole thing, that shades our whole understanding of this text. Uh, it starts with this inheritance idea. Every man, uh, well, it starts and ends, really. Verse 28, Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. Every family in Israel has an inheritance, a farm, their ancestral land uh, that they get to hang on to because God gave them a promised land. They didn't buy it. They didn't work for it. God drove the peoples out before him. It even references earlier here, we didn't read this part, uh, but how God sent hornets out. Uh, he didn't just fight battles for the Israelites. Uh, kind of in the farther reaches of things especially, he sent hornets out into the land to drive the, the people living there, to drive them out, uh, thinking like, well, we can't live here anywhere, anymore. There's too many bees. Uh, this is the extent to which God has taken care of his people, driven out the Canaanites from the land, the Amorites, I guess it says, uh, out of the land of Canaan before them, and just plunked them down in the middle of an inheritance. It's a beautiful thing. And so Joshua says, look, uh, don't be serving these gods that aren't doing anything for you, these false gods of Egypt or the Amorites, uh, because apparently uh, what's happened is over a bunch of years in Egypt, they've kind of picked up on, you know, Amun-Ra and whatever uh, the other Egypt gods are. They got a whole pantheon. And um, so that's it's bled into the worship of the one true God among the Israelites. And uh, Joshua says, no, don't let that happen anymore. Because if you continue to serve these other gods, uh, the Lord will consume you. Uh, if you if you reject him, he'll reject you too. And that's that's the way that this is going to work. So he says, hang on to him. Hang on to the God who's taking care of you, who loves you, who's actually powerful and been doing stuff. He's he's conquered all these other nations. The whole the whole point of the ten plagues is to say, look, uh, God is the the true God is knocking down these gods of Egypt Egypt one by one. Uh, hitting each of their strong points. You know, they worshipped uh, the sun, and there's a day of darkness. They worshipped the Nile, and uh, there's the Nile River turns to blood. Uh, and God, the true God, is proving that he has control over all these things, and that all these gods are just false gods who aren't doing anything for him. So Joshua says, serve the God who's true, who's powerful, who's actually 
um, in charge of everything. And the same is true for us today. Uh, <laughs> serve the God who's going to take care of you. Uh, it sounds so obvious, but it's tough to do sometimes. You know, uh, we like to pad the portfolio, you could say, diversify a little bit. Well, uh, we trust God for the most part, but uh, we should really make sure that we have a little nest egg built up. Or uh, we just need to make sure that this other thing is taken care of. But, uh, you know, we believe in God. It's just that we need to make sure that. Uh, and we're not willing to relinquish everything that we are and everything that we own and have uh, to our Lord. I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> this, is not a, this is not to say that you need to give your whole savings account to the church. What it is to say is that you need to trust God with everything that you are and everything that you have. He's the God who's taking care of you. He's the God who actually does things. And uh, he's the only one who, in the end, will be able to take care of you. Uh, beginning at verse 29, uh, Joshua uh, is dying and he's dead and buried. And at that point, uh, nothing else that Joshua has is going to be able to take care of him. Uh, his family has an inheritance in Israel and that's not going to do him any good. Uh, he may have acquired uh, money while, or gold, whatever it might have been, uh, and none of it's going to do him any good. The one thing that will be able to help him there is trust in the Lord his God. And the same is true of you and me. Uh, everybody's going to end up in the same spot. It'll be six feet under the ground and uh, the only one that we can trust in is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that by your death and resurrection, you've given us resurrection and eternal life. We ask that you would help us to trust in you and in you alone, knowing that in the end, you're the only one who will be able to uh, give us what we need, which is resurrection and eternal life. Bless us uh, through the rest of this day and uh, help us to love, our, love and serve our neighbor and to honor you with all we do. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. You all have a good day.